How's it going everyone? In today's video, I'm going to be walking you through how to implement your very own object tracker using YOLO v4 object detections with deep sort and TensorFlow. I'm going to be walking you through how to run the object tracker, how to customize it to only allow the classes that you want to track. I'm also going to be showing you how to implement the object tracker using YOLO version 4, Tiny, for increased frames per second and speed. And then I'm also going to show you how to run your object tracker with detailed information being outputted to the command window so that you can then use it to create any application that you want. I hope you guys enjoy this video and if you do, please like the video and smash the subscribe button. It helps my channel a lot. So first things first, we're going to go and grab the code in order to run this tutorial. So as always, you can head over to my GitHub, the AI guys code, and then the repository is YOLOv4 hyphen deep sort. And then all you're going to do is go ahead, code button, hit the little clipboard, copy it, open up your terminal or command shell, and just go get clone, and then just paste that bad boy in there. There it is. That's gonna go ahead and get you all the code you need for the repository and for this tutorial. So we're gonna let this download and then we'll hop right into it. So once you've got the code cloned, all you're gonna do is just CD into the repository. So it's gonna be ULV4, deep sort, and perfect. So now we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and install the dependencies in order to properly run this. So we're gonna scroll on down in the readme of the repository in GitHub. And there's this little getting started section where there's two different ways that I show you how to get the installations. So it's either the Anaconda route, which if you watch any of my videos is the way I recommend because it just is much easier to set up, especially if you're using uh, GPU to optimize it. So you can do the Conda route or you can do pip install, just a good old classic pip install. Both ways will work. If you do the Anaconda way, you do have to have Anaconda already installed. So I'm going to do the Anaconda way. So I'm going to copy this command right here, conda env create. And I've actually already done that in my terminal. So I already have the, the environment created. But you're going to want to go ahead and do this one for GPU or do this line right here for CPU. Uh, either works, but GPU is obviously just a lot faster. And then you're going to run this command right here, conda activate. So once you've finished that first command, you're going to go ahead and go conda activate. And the environment will be called YOLO v4 dash GPU. So we're going to go ahead. And if everything worked correctly, you should now see that it says YOLO v4 GPU right above my command line right here, which it does. So we're good to go. So the next step of this tutorial is the downloading of the YOLO v4 pre-trained weights. So this is a model that is already trained for YOLO v4 on over 80 classes. So it can detect over 80 classes. So we're going to go ahead and download this. And we're also going to go ahead and download the YOLO v4 tiny model. So if you're not familiar with YOLO v4 tiny, it's just a much smaller model size that is a little bit less accurate, but it actually allows you to run the model faster. So you can actually get higher frames per second when running video. So higher frames per second and faster with the offset of being a little bit less accurate of the full version. So we're going to go ahead and download both these links. So you're just going to go ahead and click both of the links, download. And then you're also going to go ahead and go back and do that with the YOLO v4 tiny as well. So once you have either one of the weights or both of the weights fully downloaded, you're going to go to your downloads folder and you're just going to quickly copy both of the weights, and then you're going to head over to wherever you cloned the code. So I've cloned it in my C drive, my repositories folder, and then YOLO v4 deep sort. And then once you're in the code base, you're going to go to this data folder right here. So data, and you're just going to go ahead and paste either one of your weights or both into this folder. And that's going to go ahead and load in the darknet style model. And then we're going to convert it over into a TensorFlow model, which we can then run easily and with uh, deep sort. So now we're ready to actually run our tracker. So like I said, there's two commands. There's the first one is going to actually save the model into a TensorFlow model. 
So we're going to go ahead and copy this command right here to save the model. And then you're just going to go ahead and paste it in and hit Enter. So this is going to go ahead and, like I said, convert over that darknet style weights into a TensorFlow model file. And if you want to actually convert it into a TensorFlow Lite or a TensorRT model file, I urge you to check out one of my previous videos where I go in depth showing you guys how to do this, because that will indeed still work with this tutorial and code as well. So once the model is fully converted, you should see something like this, where it has total parameters, trainable parameters. That means it's successfully converted the model into a TensorFlow model. So now we can go right ahead and just actually run the object tracker. So if you take the, copy this command right here, it's going to run it on a test video, which is in the repository. And it's going to go and actually output this output flag, save the resulting video showing the tracking uh, to this outputs folder as demo.avi file. And you can honestly also run this tutorial with YOLO version 3. So if you had YOLO v3 dot weights or custom weights, uh, you could check, you could just do model YOLO v3. So we're just going to go ahead and now copy the command to run the object tracker. All you have to do is just paste it in here and hit enter. And it's going to go ahead and run it. And I'm going to show you guys after this command runs that by default, it runs the object tracker on all 80 classes. So it's going to be tracking all 80 classes in the pre trained model all at once. But once it's finished, I'll show you guys how you can actually filter or customize this to only track like person, car, whatever you want. You can uh, customize it to do just the tracking of those certain specific classes, uh, which is super, super useful. And I know a lot of you guys commented that on one of my previous videos. So what you're going to see is it's outputting and it's tracking the per people, bicycle. So you can see it's doing all the classes within the actual uh, pre-trained model. And it's running on a relatively decent FPS for frames per second. So it's not super fast, but it's not super slow. It's kind of in that medium range. It'll probably be around nine frames per second, it looks like. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to see that in the command prompt that it actually prints the exact frames per second for each frame. So we can double check to see how fast it's running. But once we run the YOLO v4 tiny model, we'll actually be able to get close to over 20 or 30 frames per second, which is a lot, lot faster than this full version. But like I said, we're going to drop the accuracy uh, a bit by doing so. So you can see once it's finished, every frame it prints the frames per second to the command window. So we're getting, like I said, between 7 to 9 range frames per second, which is not bad. It is running on my GPU. So if you didn't have a GPU, you might expect this to be 3 frames per second or whatnot. So like I said, I'm going to show you guys how to edit the classes. So if I just open the code, like VS Code, code dot, um, but you can use open it in any code editor you have. I'm going to show you exactly the lines to change to be able to filter that so it only detects uh, the person classes or a car, whatever you want. So if we scroll down in this object tracker.py, that's the main script that does all of the functionality. And you've seen, you can see that I've actually commented a lot of the chunks. So if you want to look through this and kind of get a better understanding of what's going on behind the scenes, how is YOLO v4 grabbing the detections? How is it being fed into deep sort to do the object tracking? I recommend really deep diving into this code file. But if you scroll down to, I believe it's line right here, the line 159 to the line 160 range, it's where you have this variable allowed classes. So by default right here, it's actually loading in all of the class names in, if we go to core or nope, data, classes, coco.names. This is the file where that's loading in. So by default, it's going to load in all of these classes. So a lot of household items, animals, other objects. Um, so if you want to see what you can do out of the gate with the pre-trained model, check this file out. And then you can go back here. And what you do is, to, to customize it, you comment out this allowed classes. And you scroll down. And you uncomment this allowed classes. And then you can add in uh, any classes you want to detect or track into this list. So if I wanted to do car as well, let's say maybe I want truck too, you just add into this list, comma separated, and with the quotes. So make sure it's properly formatted which classes you want to allow to do the object tracking on. 
So let's just show you guys that I can detect just person class. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now if I run the exact same command I ran before, you'll see now that those bicycles and other objects that we were tracking will no longer be getting tracked. So you can see right here where we used to be detecting in the previous video this bicycle right beside this guy, beside this man, there's no longer being detected. So the only classes that are getting detected now are the person classes. So if you're just trying to create a just person or car, vehicle, whatever you want, you can customize this to do so. And if you hit Q, it's going to go ahead and quit early. So I'm just going to quit it early. And I'll show you guys that if you have set that output flag like I showed you, and you go to the deep sort, and you go to the outputs, it should save it. So it's saving right now as demo.avi. So this is the file that I just ran it on. And as you can see, it's doing the person's detections and tracking. So another cool feature you can actually do is I'll show you guys on a different example. So let's go and track only cars. And now I'm going to go back here, run the command. But now instead of this test.mp4 video, I'm going to point it to a video of a cars on a road. So you guys also have this one. So this should work for you as well. Cars.mp4, output, I'm going to call it cars.avi. And there's also another flag you can add. So if you add this dash dash info flag, it's going to go ahead and every frame print the objects that are being tracked, their location, and their tracking ID. So you can get some cool detailed information. So I recommend adding this if you're trying to get more out of the object tracking. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this. And we're going to see that now it should only track the cars. Um, so here's the video detecting all of the cars. And as you can see, it's working really well, highly efficiently tracking the cars as they go through the frame. And as I show you later after it's done, in the command prompt, you'll be seeing that it's going to be printing out all of these tracker IDs, the location of the car, and that it has found the car. So it will do the tracker ID, the class, and the bounding box coordinates of that uh, bounding box around the object itself. And you can see that it's losing the object detections for a bit, car 12, car 15. And using deep sort, when it comes back online, it actually finds those exact same ID and remembers. That's the, the, the tracking. It remembers that it is car 13, car 12, based on its features. So as you can see, here is the output for the detailed, the detailed uh, info. So if you add the dash dash info flag to your command, it's going to track the IDs in each frame. So the last couple of frames, we had lost all the other cars. So now we only have 9, 12, 13, and 15 class car, and the bounding box coordinates in this format are right here. So a lot of useful information that if you're trying to add on to the actual tracking, you can. And if you look back into the code, you'll see exactly where I do those lines and the variables that I'm printing. And you can actually see that it's actually getting higher frames per second on this video, closer to 11, between 10 and 11, probably because of the video file was smaller or something like that, easier to process. So now if I go back to the repository, I'll show you guys the results on the YOLO v4 tiny model. So if I go ahead and grab this command right here, what this does is it's actually going to save a different TensorFlow model for the YOLO v4 tiny so that you could run both commands whenever you wanted. So it's going to go ahead and convert over that YOLO v4 tiny dot weights into a saved uh, TensorFlow model for the tiny. So once the model is done converting, it looks the same as the previous one. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab the second command. And one thing I want to point out that I forgot to mention is that you can run the object tracker on webcam. So you can run it on your webcam. I'm not going to show you guys that because it's pretty boring um, in my case because it's just going to be me sitting on the other side of the screen. But uh, what you do is instead of inputting in the video uh, flag, you just add the video flag and set it to 0, so like this, like this command right here. So you can go ahead and try that. It is cool if you have a lot of stuff going on on your webcam, but you guys don't want to see me behind the screen. So, <laughs> so now that we've done our tiny model, we're going to go ahead and paste this one in. We're going to change this back to person because there's no cars in that one video. And now we can go ahead and run this command. 
And we should see that it's uh, processing at a little bit faster of a speed, higher frames per second with, again, the results overall accuracy of the model being a tiny bit reduced. So you can see that the video was processing almost in real time, slightly below real time, which is the perk of YOLO v4 Tiny. Um, if you're trying to do an Android application or iOS or any Edge device like a Raspberry Pi, this will be able to run a lot faster and be a lot smoother and closer to real time if that's what your overall purpose is. So as you can see, the frames per second is over double of what it was for the full YOLO v4 model, and we're running around 20 to 23 frames per second, which is pretty close to uh, real time. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. And you guys, I urge you, if you want to try to run the object tracking with custom weights, to check out one of my previous videos where I show you guys how to convert and use custom weights with uh, YOLO v4. And it'll apply to this exact same uh, video and tutorial. It will work here. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and comment down below in the comments what kind of features you want me to add to this YOLO v4 deep sort. I'm going to add uh, a couple features. So the ones that get the most traction in the comments are what I'll focus on first. But as always, I hope you enjoyed. And please smash that like button if you did. And subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date with future YOLO v4 and deep sort content. Thanks so much.